Let's create a pad from a sample Coca-Cola bottle. Here is what we will be creating. To create the sound, we first have to sample the Coca-Cola bottle. For that, I'm just going to take the bottle here and um, open it up. And now I'm uh, just going to go ahead and um, I'm going to take this channel here. Um, I'm going to select my microphone and we are going to record me just um, making a sound with this bottle. Let's try it again. Let's see if we can get a better take. And let's do one short one. All right. Just going to close up the bottle again. All right. And let's take a listen at, uh, to what we got here. Um, stop recording here, put it to no, no input. And let's turn on the track and... All right. No, I don't like that one. I think this first one here was the best of the long ones. Let's uh, create a new audio track and I'm just going to copy it over. And let's take a listen to the short ones. All right. I think I like the first one the most here again. Now we can delete the audio track we recorded everything with and uh, just take this and we are going uh, to consolidate both so we can uh, normalize them uh, that's basically a simple trick because when you uh, have uh, just an audio clip like this one it always says uh, zero decibels here and uh, if you consolidate it with uh, command j uh, it says the peak is at minus six uh, decibels, and if we just type in zero here, it normalizes this, uh, the clip for us. And now we have to find the start and the beginning points here of each of those uh, samples, and uh, maybe add a little bit of those um, fades here so it doesn't sound uh, way off. Yeah, that's all right. Let's take the short one here. Perfect. Now we got our sample sounds that we want to use. Um, so what do we do? So we, we so we can play them with our MIDI keyboard or our controller. We're going to create a MIDI track, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and um, have this. Uh, this MIDI track open, so we could uh, drop an instrument here and we're going to use um, Simpler and we're going to drop this file in here and now the track is armed and we can just start playing. Alright, now uh, the first thing to really play it um, is we have to make sure it's in key because the note we recorded um, is pretty much unknown to us. Uh, so what we can do is uh, we can use a spectrum analyzer here and just play it back and you can see the peak is here. And it's, it's right on the verge between C2 and uh, C sharp. So let's go ahead and um, First off, transpose it to 12 semitones up, so uh, we have uh, a C3 instead of a C2. And detune it like maybe 20 um, 
of those CTs down. So we have a, more of um, a a um, a C instead of a C sharp. And um, let's uh, play a chord here. Sounds pretty good, but would have sounded good if it was off because it doesn't uh, care about that. But it's, uh, it will now sound good if we uh, use it with other instruments. Now, we have um, this uh, thingy here and um, we have one problem. If we hold down the chord, it suddenly stops playing, even though I have still pressed the keys. Um, to resolve that issue, we uh, are going to use uh, our uh, simpler and turn it into a sampler. And now we have much more uh, refined control over the sample. And um, what we are going to, uh, to want to do is we are going to want to choose uh, one sustain mode here. And that basically plays uh, the sample either, uh, either um, uh, repeat, um, repeatedly until we uh, release uh, the key. So it uh, will do that all the time. Or we have another mode and that's uh, playing it forward and then backwards and then forwards again. Sounds like this. And so on. Now, since uh, the recorded sample already has a little attack part and a little release part here, let's um, choose this uh, repeated cycle from, let's say, here to uh, right about where the release um, starts and uh, just repeat this little part and use this uh, as a release part and this as a attack part. And say, um, we want to uh, listen to it again. Now it clicks, so we want to crossfade maybe between them. So we uh, use this crossfade thingy here and just turn it up a little bit. Let's listen to that. Still a little bit too obvious for me. Um, let's uh, crossfade a little bit more. And you can see this uh, line here where it crossfades. And we want it uh, not to touch our little attack part here, but rather only our sustain part, so we don't get any big changes in volume while we're fading. Let's uh, try this again. Um, let's try the um, repeated mode instead of the forward-backwards mode. That's still a little bit obvious. Let's um, pull this back a little bit more. Maybe crossfade even more. Let's try this. That's perfect. That's really perfect. All right. Now um, let's put our detune we had in here uh, back again. Let's uh, pull the volume down a little bit so we don't um, push the limiter on the master because that would sound uh, bad. And now we have basically our sound. We can use a sustain pedal, we can use it for basses. Sounds really awesome, to be honest, because it's like um, a sine wave with a few harmonics, but not much, and this um, noise that's uh, there. Um, but if we want to play those basses, we may want to cut down the noise a little bit. So let's um, go to this filter in global setting here, play a bass note and um, try to adjust the filter a little bit. Yeah, that sounds better, I think. Let's use that one and um, let's um, take a look at uh, the level here. And since uh, I recorded it with a stereo microphone uh, and it's only a mono signal, let's uh, use a utility here to put the width to 0%. So we only got a mono signal. And 
und ähm, let's ähm, let's take our EQ8 here and uh, remove the noise on the bottom end here. And record the passage. Uh, we are going to have played, so uh, I think it's worth going. Yeah, that one. Uh, let's turn this one back on and the count in. Now, what we heard here was the audio track that I played back those two samples. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, um, quantize it. Somehow we managed to screw it up a little bit. Let's put this one at the beginning. What the hell did I do here? All right, I somehow managed to like um, play <laughs> one um, thingy short here. Yeah, that's better. Let's add a little bit of rework. And let's duplicate this one and uh, remove everything um, but the um, lowest note in the chord we are playing here to um, add the bass. So we are going to take all of these. Press legato on here. And we have our low pass in here. That's uh, of course good. Now there's one thing um, I might want to change here, and that's just uh, in our filter and global setting here on. Uh, on the bass, I'm going to add a little bit of release, and I'm going to do the same for the um, uh, for the chords here, but a little bit more release. Sounds awesome. Really does sound quite good. And it's a really nice soft sound, but it's still interesting um, because the noise is in there um, from blowing this bottle. Um, it's really awesome. But now let's add um, the little effe uh, effect thingy we had in there. Uh, let's add another MIDI track and use this uh, little uh, shorter, um, uh, the shorter. Um, uh, sample we recorded and now we can uh, play that again now uh, let's transpose it up by 12 semitones so we have it on the right octave and now let's uh, put the detune back on because we used the same bottle um, the, the detune on both should be about the same um, because of course the um, the volume of the bottle didn't change the note that it uh, played didn't change so we don't have to um, look at what uh, note is played here again and those were the notes uh, we're going to play 
Uh, but uh, I also added a little bit of compression in here just to uh, get the level straight. At the low end, the uh, noise that's uh, being introduced uh, or that was introduced during the recording. And now let's add our little ping pong delay we had on there. Now, let's uh, record what we got here. What the hell happened there? Ah, we are starting at a weird position, aren't we? Not on beat here. Um, let's uh, drag them over. All right. A little bit and the, uh, bring up the reverb. And there you have it. Um, one last thing we might want to do is um, just uh, up the release here to let's say. Um, uh, three or a few seconds just so it's uh, longer than the sample by itself because the whole sample is basically um, from silence to uh, the the um, the peak and then it's only release and it's only um, a few maybe a second long maybe even shorter so uh, we already have a release in there so we don't have to automate the volume with our volume envelope at all but there's no way to turn it up uh, off, so we have just an uh, attack of zero, sustain of zero de uh, decibels, and a very long release. Basically, do uh, does the same as um, um, removing the uh, volume envelope. But one thing, and that's uh, basically it holds the note uh, longer than you actually played it. So the last thing we have to do to create the sound you heard on the be uh, beginning is to Go back to the first sound we created and just add the notes that are actually being played in octave above and turn down the velocity a little bit. So we have this. 